Hi. Hopefully this will be a quick video just to answer a viewer question about how I'm currently uh, getting my uh, PF Sense box connected to my WAN ports now that I have virtualized it. So I did mention in a comment that my PF Sense box is no longer a physical machine, it's a virtual machine. So it's a virtual machine here in my Windows server. So uh, as far as PF Sense is concerned, we have a LAN port and we've got the two WAN ports. Now, really quick rundown on this. The reason I've got two WAN connections is to effectively double my speed. Um, now, I did have a video about this, and I did have a few comments where people said, I'm not doubling my speed, I'm just load balancing. And yes, I am load balancing, because it's the best option I have where I live. If I want faster internet, unless I want to pay probably tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars to pull fiber to my house, and I'm not going to live here forever, so I'm not going to do it. I'll do it when I move. Uh, you know, this is the best I've got. So the best I've got is VDSL on Australia's NBN. And I'm super lucky that my VDSL, compared to most of the country, is actually pretty decent. I can get a sync speed maximum of around 90 meg for downloads and around 30 meg for uploads. I have two of these connections where I effectively combine them so I can download things at effectively twice the speed and upload things in some cases at effectively double the speed. Now there are a whole bunch of situations where I can only use one connection at a time, but there are a whole lot of cases where I can use both connections at once. And just to quickly show that off, as an example, so I'm on the... Um, I have two of these 100 meg connections. The speed that both of my connections gets around 90-ish at a sync. The actual transfer speeds I get are around 160 and around a 55 upload. Now, here's a screenshot from uh, a time where I recently had to upload about a 40 gig uh, Outlook file, a PST file, to the Azure cloud. And in this upload, I was using both, the, the system automatically used both of my connections to do the upload. So I was transferring data at 52 meg a second. That is quite a bit faster than one of my connections. I'm definitely using both. But again, it's only in some scenarios. A lot of YouTube uploads are using one. But definitely worth it for me. Everything from Windows updates to Xbox updates are using definitely both the connections. But anyway, I've got two WANs. Now these are VDSL into a modem, and then the modem has got uh, a LAN connection into uh, two separate NICs. And I've got the uh, DMZ set up, so anything that hits those modems gets forwarded to my PF Sense box. Now, the way I've physically got this set up is like this. Now, for a moment, forget that the machines are virtualized. Uh, I've got my WAN 1 connection connected to PFSense through one NIC. I've got my WAN 2 connection connected to PFSense with another NIC. I've then got a third NIC, my LAN connection, connected to a switch. In this case, a virtual switch, so vSwitch. I've then got my servers, such as my domain controller and my Hyper-V host and also file server, same machine. Uh, they're plugged into the virtual switch. And then there's a cable that comes out of the virtual switch into my actual switch and my PC is plugged in. So um, the way this is set up in uh, the Hyper-V host is uh, if we have a look at my network cards to begin with, I've actually got um, so I've got two, uh, two physical network cards here that are in a team. So just ignore them for now. We'll just say uh, that Team Blue here is my physical network card for the sake of argument. I've also got WAN 1 as a physical network card and WAN 2 as a physical network card. I have a cable plugged into each of these at the back of my physical server. WAN 1 goes to modem 1. 
WAN 2 goes to modem 2, and the vSwitch 1 goes into my normal switch. Now, this vSwitch is connected to the vSwitch port. So that the physical the physical network card port is connected to my vSwitch. My vSwitch has got all of my virtual machines plugged into it and the host machine is plugged into it. And then it's connected to the physical LAN port that goes out to the world to my real switch. Now, to do this, we go into Hyper-V Manager and we go to the Virtual Switch Manager. Now in the Virtual Switch Manager, you'll see we've got our Virtual Switch, which as I said before, is connected to host and other VMs and physical network card to get to the outside world. We've got WAN 1, which is connected directly to physical network card to get to the outside world to get to one of the modems. And WAN 2, separate physical network card. Same deal. So to set this up, and as an example, I'm going to use this unused network port. So to set this up, we're going to make a new virtual switch and it's going to be external. Now we're going to select create virtual switch and we can give it a name and then we're going to select the uh, card that it's going to patch to. So if we go to the properties of this card, we're going to see what it's actually named and then from the drop down list we can choose the same card. So I know that this is this card, it's going to be physically plugged in. Now. If this allow management operating system to share this network adapter tick box is ticked, if it's ticked, it will make another virtual switch and it will patch my host into it as well as the outside uh, world and also the virtual machines I select. We don't want to tick that. We only want this ticked on our main network. Since this will be a WAN, I don't want it ticked because I have no need for my host to get that connection. I just want that connection pushed through to the, to the virtual machine. So with that unticked, we can click apply and that's it. So it's basically like three steps. You name it, you choose the card and you untick that. So now when we make a new virtual machine, we can choose that test nick. So, who do you have one called? Sure. Does that? There we go. So, um, what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the settings of our new virtual machine. So, theoretically, this will be our PF Sense box. And uh, first thing, you know, you do your RAM, do your processor. And all that stuff. So the network adapter that's set up here is my new test. So it's going to be patched through directly to this. And then we also need uh, another WAN port if we wanted to do another WAN port or a LAN, you know a LAN port. So you know this router gets two sides. <laughs> it's got a connection to the outside world and one to the inside network. So we're going to add a new card. We're going to go add hardware, network adapter, and add. Then from the drop down list, we're going to select our virtual switch, which is this connection here. Right, so from, from the PF Sense box to the virtual switch. So we're going to make, select the virtual switch and go apply. So now we get two network cards. So this virtual machine at this point has the physical network card. So this WAN 1 connection, it has this card connected just to a port to plug the WAN 1 into. And we've got the V switch, which will connect the PFSense box to the virtual switch that our other servers are connected to. And then through that, the rest of our network. So that's all it takes. It's pretty easy. It's just those two steps. Then 
like any other virtual machine, just, you know, mount the ISO, install it. 